Grade 6 Math, number 8.2, Theoretical Probability. Yesterday, in video 8.1, we did experimental probability. This is theoretical probability. This is finding probability without doing any physical work, just mental work, okay? It's the ratio of the number of ways an event can occur to the total number of equally likely outcomes. So it's written as a fraction. The ways that it can occur would be the numerator, and the total of equally likely outcomes would be the denominator. The complement of the event is all the ways that it cannot occur. So P is probability, event is what we're trying to make happen, and then it's our ratio, our fraction, okay? So I have this spinner. It's a magnetic spinning arm on here that I can put on my board and I can spin it. And for experimental probability, I spun it 20 times, I tally marked how many times it landed on which color, and I figured the percentages of times that it landed on each one. The probability that it landed on blue was three times out of the 20 spins, which is 15% of the time when I did the fractions and turned it into a percentage. The percentage of it being on yellow was two, so that's 10% of the time, Red was 40% of the time, and green was 35% of the time. See, it was 7. I multiplied both by 5. I got 35, so it's 35%. So on a number line of certainty here, one, the side over here is impossible, and that's 0, and completely certain that it's going to happen is a 1. The halfway mark is it's a 50-50 chance it could happen. So here's where they landed. See? Red 40 green 35, blue 15, yellow 10. So it was saying it's more likely that it would land on red than yellow. See that? This would be 100% happening, and this would be 50% happening, and this would be it not happening at all. Well, that's all and well for experimental probability and actually spinning it and keeping the tally marks and doing the math and everything. But in theoretical probability, okay, which is what this video is about, we're not going to spin it at all. We know that there's four colors, okay? There's one blue one. So we've got one out of a four chance that it's going to land on the blue. The probability of it landing on blue is a one in four. The number of ways blue can occur, there's only one blue, and the total equally likely outcomes is four colors. So it's got a one in four chance of landing on the blue or a 25% chance. Now I also put numbers on them. If you can see, one, two, three, four, one and three are odd, two and four are even. So it's got two chances that it could land on an odd number out of four numbers, see? Which is 50% of the time. Now the complement of an event is the ways the event cannot occur. So if blue can occur 25% of the time, then it cannot occur 75, see? Because those are the other colors, all right? So the probability of not blue happening is 75%. The probability of not an odd number is 50%. See? Because of the po probability of, of it possibly happening was 50, of it not happening is 50. Okay? And they're written like this. There's a little symbol. It's kind of a swirl, a little swirly line like this. It means not in logic, in math. It's called a tilde. And that means not blue or not an odd number. It actually means negate or negation, which means negative or not, okay? The P blue, possibility of blue happening, if we add that to the possi possibility of blue not happening, equals 1, all right? Because the way our scale works is 0 to 1, all right? It's got a 0 to 1 chance of happening. 0 is it won't happen, and 1 is it will happen. The 1 equates to 100%, though, okay? So if you add the po probability of it happening to the probability of it not happening, it'll be 100%, which is the 1. It's the 25 plus the 75 equals the 100, okay? Now, you take the probability of it not being blue, and it equals this 1, sort of like the 100%, if you take away the probability of it being blue from the not being, you know, from the one, that's how you're going to get the not blue, 
All right. I hope I am making this clear. To get the not blue, you subtract the blue, the possibility of it being blue from the 100%. Okay? And you'll get the 75%. All right? And then just remember that this means not in math. Okay? All right. I have a bag, and it's got 12 chips in it. Six are red. Six are green. All the red ones have even numbers written on them, and all the green ones have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 on them. If Emma pulls out an even-numbered red chip, she wins. If Bob pulls out an odd-numbered green chip, he wins. Is this a fair game? Is this fair to Bob? Or is it unfair? What are the chances that Emma's going to pull out a red even chip? All of the red ones are even. But look at the green odd ones. There's only one, two, three odd ones that are green. See? So the probability that Emma's going to win is six chances out of 12 because six of the red ones are all even out of the 12 chips so she's got a 50 percent chance of winning but poor bob the green odd ones there's only three of them out of the 12 chips he's got a three out of 12 chance or a one out of four chance or a 25 percent chance of winning so poor bob it's not fair to him is it all right so now you understand theoretical probability and how we don't need to roll any dice or run any races or spin any wheels to find our theoretical probability. For experimental, we do, but not for theoretical. And now you know the complement is the opposite of the probability, right? And you also know the little swirly line means a tilde, and it means not, okay? I'll see you next video. I hope this explained it well, because this is just the tip of the iceberg for doing math probability. And it's just a sixth grade level to get you started so that you can begin to understand it. And I hope I made it clear enough that it wasn't too confusing. We're going to continue talking about this in the next video. We're going to compare the theoretical and the experimental. I hope to see you there. Bye.